Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Umbrella OS on Portainer as a Docker image. So, uh, a little bit about this series, I'm going over our home labs, installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse. So go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today, Umbrella. Uh, I'll be installing it uh, on Portainer because this is packaged up into a Docker image. Um, so you can run it with uh, ju uh, just co copying and pasting a Docker pose inside of Portainer and then uh, installing it. And then you have your Umbrella OS up and running. Um, so next I'll be explaining the Docker pose on Big Bear Video Assets. So now I'm going to start in Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to go over the search and type Umbrella. And then now you'll see the Docker Compose down here. And So now the services and then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Umbrella OS. And then the name of the container is set to Big Bear Umbrella OS. And this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. And then the image down here, so uh, it's on Docker Hub by default because there's no year before this. And this is the Docker image. This is the Docker image tag. And then the container restart policy is set to unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the ports down here, so 8080 on the host side, and then on the container side is 80. If on the host side it does collide with another port on your host, you can change it to like 8081 or uh, 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 something else. So now the volumes, so it's set with a local volume that's Big Bear Umbrella Data, and that's defined right here. And then on the uh, container side is Data. And then now you're going to have to give it access to the Docker engine. So var run docker.sock and then var run docker.sock. So on the left side is the host, on the right side is the container. And then we're gonna give it a grace period to, uh, to stop. And then now we're gonna define the volumes down here. So big bro umbrella data, and then the name, the driver is local. Also on the ports up here, on the right side is the container port. Do not change that port. You can only change the host port right here. So that's a little bit about the Docker and Pose. I'm going to go over here to copy raw file. And then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this set up. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down in the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my portainer and I'm going to go to home dashboard and then stacks right here. And then now I'm going to go over to add stack and then now I'm going to give this stack a name. So I'm going to give it umbrella and then I'm going to come down here to the web editor and I'm going to paste in the Docker and post I copied from big bear video assets. And then once you do that, you should be good. So I'm going to just say deploy the stack down here. And what that done is it downloaded the Docker image off the registry, got it extracted, and got it up with Docker Buzz underneath because it is using the Docker engine. Um, so now we have the stack up and running. So now if you start on stacks right here, and then you come over here to your stack, you click it, um, you'll see stack up here and editor, and, and, and then the actions down here for the stack are stop the stack, delete the stack, and then create timber from the stack. Stack duplication slash migration. You can also go over the editor, and this is great for uh, making a Docker Compose because you can edit it on here. Then you can come down here and update the stack. Now, if you have a um, a tag like latest that you're using up here, um, you can say repull image and redeploy, and that means it'll repull the image off the registry. 
and then it'll get the new image, all the contents off there, and then it'll uh, uh, it'll be updated on your side. Um, that's if you're using a side attack, like a latest. Um, so once you do that, you can just say check mark and then update. Um, so you can also see the containers in the stack, and then you can go into them. So actions up here for the container, start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, just edit. And then the container status down here, and then the ID, name, status, uh, the created, and the start time. Uh, logs, the, the, this is great for debugging right here. Um, so I'm going to go backwards. And you can inspect, stats, console, attach. You can also see the access control and then the create image down here. The container details like the image and then the port configuration, which is the, uh, this is on the host side and then on the container side is 80. Uh, there's no command uh, entry point right here and then the environment variables, the labels down here and then the restart policy. Now I wouldn't set it right here. I, I would go over to your stack a lot like we were just in and go to Umbrella and then the editor, and then you can change the a restart policy right here, and then you can come down here and update the stack. Um, so now you see the volumes down here. So on the host side is var run docker.sock, and then it's got a local volume right here, and this is the path in the conta containers over here on the right. And then the connected networks down here, so Umbrella default, and then Umbrella main network, it created two. Um, so that's a little bit about the Portainers UI. So now I'm gonna go to the UI. So you're gonna go to your IP, and then you're gonna put 8080 if uh, you left the host port the same. Now I'm going to go to it. And then now it says, welcome to Umbrella OS. So you can say start. And then you're gonna put your name in and then a password. And then confirm the password and then now say create. So now we're in, your umbrella is now ready. So you can say next. So now we're in the UI. So now we're in umbrella. Uh, so you can go to the app store and you can install an app so you can go to add guard home right here and then pre press install and then now it will install and then you can also just open it and it's running on your portainer um so if we go back to portainer and we go to uh the local stacks we, we have three stacks now so you can see the add guard home has been added and you can see it's limited. It's not managed by Portainer. So you will have to manage that uh, stack inside of Umbrel. And right here. So now you can go backwards. Uh, and then now you can see it on the home screen. And you can go to the settings right here. You can see your storage, memory, CPU, temperature. And then you can open a live usage and then you can also uh, see up here, you can log out, restart, shut down, the account, wallpaper, the Wi-Fi, two-factor authentication, remote tour access, and then migration assistant, language, troubleshoot, device info, advanced settings, and then umbrella. Um, do not check for updates from this because you will be updating the Docker image. Um, so you can come down here and get the live stats as well. And then you can go to your widgets and then you can go ahead and add your widgets. And then now you have widgets on the home screen. So that's a little bit about Umbrella OS. So I just went over step-by-step step on getting Umbrella OS working on Portainer as a Docker image. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or need community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.